This is Dan of Vagabond Awake, and today I feel lucky to have Kim here uh, on, on the show. He, he has one of the most remarkable stories that I think I've ever heard living overseas. Kim, welcome uh, to the channel. It's no a pleasure, pleasure to have you here. Um, so what country are we in right now? We're in Sri Lanka. Right. Uh, this is Gaul, or as I hear them calling out on the bus, galley, 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 galley. So it, it must be pronounced galley. Right, right. And one of the things that was remarkable when you first emailed me back a few months ago was your cost of living. I mean, we can get into detail, but what are you, on average per month, what are you spending here to live here, roughly? Uh, I've never spent any more than 600 Right. Right. Um, and I had an experiment one month. Right. Where I tried to live like a local. Right. And that was 300. I'm talking Australian dollars. Right, right. Right. So 300 is 60,000 rupees. Right, right. Right. Uh, but at the time I was living in a unit that was 30,000 rupees a month. Right. And I lived on 30,000 rupees for all my expenses. Wow. Right. But That's now, my expenses, uh, I've got a better quality unit because it's right on the water. Right. There are steps that go down into the ocean. Right. So I can just walk and swim with the turtles. Yeah. And, and it's 50,000 rupees a month. 50,000 rupees a month. So let's talk rupees when we talk yeah, our fine. expenses because and 300 rupees is one US dollar that's approximately. Right, that's right. And 200 for one Australian dollar. Right. Okay. Okay. So if, if you want to convert the money, we'll, we'll, we'll do talk it on, in I'll rupees. do it on the screen here. Okay. So you're just talking rupees. Okay. Yeah. So using your number of 300, that's what we find here too. It's 300 to one. Your 50,000 uh, per month is $150. Yes. Right? Yep. Yeah. So your rent on the water yep. is in Sri Lanka is $150. Yes. So it's a is, it, is that it, a studio or is it a, what's there? Okay. What it is, it's a converted restaurant. Okay. So I've got a big open area undercover. Right. Right, where I can sit and look over the ocean. Like a big patio area with a cover? Yes, okay. yes, completely okay. covered, roofed. Yeah. And I have a commercial kitchen. Right. I have a living area right. and I have a bedroom. And then down the back, I have my shower and toilet areas. So it's like a proper one-bedroom apartment right yep. on the ocean, it sounds yes. like. Um, yep. That's amazing for $150. What, what is a typical, um, what are some of your other expenses? Okay, so what about like electricity, for example? Okay. I'll give you the new prices because everything's gone up um, recently. Perfect. So I pay six thousand rupees a month right. now for electricity. Six thousand, so twelve dollars. Yes. Right. Right. Forgive me. I'll I'll try to stop okay. doing that. I, I pay sixteen hundred and seventy-five rupees for unlimited data on my internet. So I just have a phone with unlimited data. Okay, your phone's a hotspot. Yes. Yeah. So, because what I do is. I WhatsApp all my family. Okay. I don't know anyone here in Sri Lanka, so I don't need to have phone calls. Okay. So that's sixteen seventy five a month for my internet. Right, right. I also have a water bill that is about two thousand rupees a month. My visa is seventeen thousand five hundred a month. Right. So I'm living under one hundred and twenty thousand rupees a month. Wow. And what about like groceries? That's all the groceries. That includes the groceries. That includes groceries. And does that include going out to eat also? I, I don't go out to eat because I've been here for a period of time. Right. And everywhere you go, sell right. curry and rice. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same curry and it's the same curry and rice. Right, right. Right. And if there's five restaurants in the town, they all sell exactly the same product. Okay. So to get variety, right. now I'll give you some uh, for instances. Uh, chicken legs uh, you can get for 1600 rupees a kilo right um, chicken Maryland you can get for about 2200 rupees a kilo okay you can get whole uh, chicken yeah. for about 1500 a kilo right what about tuna? tuna okay what you about get, tuna? tuna okay, okay. The, the tuna is about 600 to 700 rupees a kilo, wow. but I like the yellowfin tuna. Okay. So I pay extra for the yellowfin, right? And that is 1,000 rupees a kilo. Okay. So I bought a beautiful big seven kilo one. Wow. It was actually seven and a half kilos and they charged me 7,000 rupees. Wow. Prawns uh, have, have just gone up. They used to be 1,500. Now they're 2,000 rupees a kilo for big prawns. 
big prawns. Right, right. right? That's great. Um, so I have those as well occasionally. So I always keep a variety of frozen meat in my fridge. Right. Right. Uh, so that I've got a variety of what I feel like eating at the time. And you and you like to cook. Sounds like you enjoy it. Well, yes. Um, I, I know that it's clean. Right. Uh, I don't eat beef here. Um, and I see some of the hygiene at some of the local restaurants. Right. And uh, I just find that I know that if I cook it myself and I've washed everything and I know it's clean, right. then I do it. The funny thing is if you go here of an afternoon, you'll see fish yeah. in the sun being sold. Yeah. And you wonder, is that being sold at a restaurant that I'm going to eat that fish this afternoon? <laughs> So when I get my fish, I go down at 7 o'clock in the morning. Right. It's just been caught. It's just off, just off the boat. Now you can get mahi-mahi here, yeah. about a 1,000 a kilo, right? And some of the mahi-mahi are very big. Right. They've got a nice white flesh, right? Um, the, we also get uh, a little black fish that has a real thick skin on it like a leather jacket. Thick skin on it like a leather jacket, right? And we get those, and this got a nice white fillet, and, and I often uh, fillet those. Um, my brother's staying with me at the moment right. for a couple of months, uh, and he likes different variety in fish. Right. So we get that. It's a trigger fish, they call that. Okay. He gets, and he used to get that trigger fish in the coral reefs in Australia, so he knows it's a nice fish. Oh, nice. So there is variety of fish. Right. But everyone tends to eat the tuna, but the skipjack tuna and all those are a little bland. Now you can buy tuna at the supermarkets, but they've got all that dark flesh on it and... You like find it fresh. Which we cut it off. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... We, so, so what are some of the fruits you like? You also eat uh, fruits you mentioned. You yeah. like to do fruit salads for lunch? Okay. In Australia we have a fruit called a sour sop, but it's very, very sour. Very sour. Here the sour sop is very similar to a custard apple. Oh. Right, very similar in texture and flavour to, to, to that. Uh, you're looking at about 200 rupees a kilo for the sour sop. Uh, papaya can go as high as 300 rupees a kilo. Right. Um, I, you can buy coconut juice. Everyone sells the coconut juice here everywhere. Not a big uh, fan of that, but you can get a coconut for 100 rupees. That's generally the accepted price. And that's the king coconut, the yellow one. It's a lot sweeter than most of the coconuts in other countries. Right. Yeah. The bananas are anywhere between 130 and 200 rupees a kilo. Uh, pineapples, depending on the size, but I bought some yesterday and I paid uh, uh, 400 for one that was about a kilo and a half. They either sell it by the kilo, which is about 300 a kilo, or you buy it by the whole pineapple. Okay. Right. So when I make my fruit salad up, because I like to have fruit for lunch, yeah. so it's not heavy. And I, I generally have those four standard fruits, banana, pineapple, uh, papaya. Uh, but the grocery pricing here, they have a great system here, right? In that if you go to a little shop or you go to a big shop, it's all the same price, right? It's, yeah. it's all government control, the pricing here. Okay. But I think looking behind the scenes, what happens is the big supermarkets get 30% off their price. Oh. The little shops only get 20% off their price which means then that because they buy more, the big shops then make more profit. Right, yeah. But everyone sells it the same. So if you go to a little shop, you'll buy your Coca-Cola, your drinks, your chips, whatever you buy there, you'll pay the same price at a little corner shop in the middle of nowhere as you will at a big supermarket. Okay. You you live in the south part of Sri Lanka, right? What's the city you live in? Well, it's called it's near Matara, which is, which is a, a big central hub. Right. And... Uh, I, I live at a place called Dondra, which is the southernmost point of Sri Lanka. Now, it cost me 50 rupees to go into Matara. Is that on the bus? On the bus. Okay. The bus system here is absolutely amazing. We love it. Yeah. Right? We love it. The, so, from Matara to Colombo Airport right. is 1,400 rupees. It's a two and a half hour journey in an air conditioned bus. You put all your luggage underneath, you sit there in comfortable chairs. It's 1,400. You, you're 70, I think you told me, right? In November, I'll be 70. And you're in really great shape. Um, what's your secret? Well, I don't smoke. Okay. And uh, I don't drink. Right. Um, but I do a lot of exercise. Yeah. And, uh, and that's because I was using Sri Lanka as a base. 
Okay. So from Sri Lanka, I went to Nepal and I trekked the Himalayas. Okay. Trekked the Himalayas. Wow. Yep. Yep. I then went to um, the Himalayas in India. Right. And went to Shimla. Okay. Been right. there. Um, and I, I ride a cycle around. And the reason I ride a cycle is because you're going slow, people call out to you and want to talk to you. And it's where I got my unit. I was cycling along. Your apartment on the, on yes. the water. And the man said, are you looking for an apartment? Right. And he said, 100,000 rupees. And I said, well, why would I pay 100,000 when I'm paying 50,000 where I am? Right, right. And he went, oh, I'll match that. <laughs> <laughs> then when I went to another place, I, I saw a sign on the fence and it was a brand new apartment. Right. And about 100 metres from there is where they do all the dive schools. Right. The right. paddy dive schools. Yeah, yeah. Right, beautiful place to, to stay. And he had two bedrooms, one with air conditioning and hot water, right. the other one with just a fan, double bed. He also had a fully equipped kitchen and a uh, fridge. Right. And I said to him, 50,000 rupees a month? And he said, yes. So that was for two bedrooms. Right, right. I could have had that. Wow. But then when I compared that, which was better quality, uh, better quality but it didn't have the view or the atmosphere. Or the big covered area facing the ocean. Oh, beautiful. At night. It's like a wonderland seeing all the fishing boats. You see all the oil uh, ships go past, all the container ships going past on the horizon. Right. There's always something happen yeah. there. So, and as well as the fact that I can just walk down the steps, you know, and go for a dive. We have three resident turtles in my bay. Right, right. So I just thought that it was, it was better to stay there than it was in a place that it Sounds had, more fun. Yeah. Even though I don't have air conditioning, the good part is I'm right on the water, right, and I've got a breeze there all the time. So, um, and you ride a bicycle around Sri Lanka, yeah? Yep. And um, does that? What's that like? Is it? Um, does it feel safe and everything? Amazingly, the bus drivers here are known to be crazy. Yeah, they are crazy. Yeah. But they give you room when you're riding, and I ride on the edge of the road, and I'm courteous, right? And I give them room. Yeah. I, I've. I've never even nearly been hit with a bus, right? The worst are the tuk-tuks who will overtake you and then pull in front of you. And you right? have to slow down, yeah. Or no one uses a blinker. You could buy a, a car here or a tuk-tuk or a motorbike here that's 10 years old and the blinker's never been used. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do without. Even though it's cheap to live, I'm not scrimping and saving. You know, I've always got whatever I want. Yeah. I just... You can only eat so much food. Yeah, I mean, you can tell by all the fish, you know the prices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Big tub of ice cream right. is 800 rupees. Right. Nothing. Um, I quite often make desserts out of sago. Um, and I make sago with a mango jelly over it and put fresh mangoes in it. Wow. And when you eat that, because it's glutinous, like sticky rice, it's exactly the same as you get the sticky rice and mango in Thailand. Right, right. right. So you mentioned Thailand, and you mentioned India and Nepal, and you mentioned you use this as a base. Yep. So, do, so how long have you been here in Sri Lanka again? Just under two years. And so do you see yourself staying here happily ever after, or are you more the type that wants to uh, explore? What, what are, what's next for you? Well, I've, I've seen all there is to see here. Okay. My next place that I'm moving to is Cambodia. Cambodia. I'm going to move to CM Reap. Okay. So uh, there's an apartment that I've been in contact with the owner, and it has a washing machine, cooking facilities and all that. It's in a quiet street, and it's only five minutes by cycle. Right. To Pub Street and all the streets. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've been there. Um, and that's in CM Reap. Yeah. So that's 140 US dollars. Now, I will talk US dollars here because yeah, that's fine. they have US dollars in Cambodia. Right, yeah. right. It's $140 a month for an apartment. Right. Right. The electricity, they said, is a little more expensive. So I worked out it was going to be twice as expensive as here. Yeah. I can get a 12 month visa because I'm over 55 for 300 American dollars for right. a 12 month visa. Right. So it works out at $25 a month. US cheaper than here. Uh, as I said, the 12 month visa is a great thing, and there are very few restrictions you don't need to prove your income. You, I think you just need a passport and maybe fingerprint. It, almost nothing. 
yeah. to get a 12 month visa, you've just got to be over 55 and have a passport. Wow. They don't ask you any income, any savings or whatever. And are you going to use Cambodia as a base to yes. travel around Southeast Asia? Where do you think you'll hit this go? I'll go to Vietnam, which is over the border. Right. Uh, Phu Quoc. Phu Quoc, yeah. He's just over the uh, yeah. over the sea. You can see it from Cam Pot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we've been there. Yep, yeah. I've seen your stuff on that. <laughs> uh, also, I'll go to Laos. Oh, nice. And occasionally there are uh, very very cheap flights. Right. Thirty dollar US flights from CM Reap, now that they've got the international airport, right. $30 flights to Bangkok. Tell us about the visa here. When you arrive here, you get a 30 day visa. Right. You can then go online and extend it for another 60 days. Right. You can then extend it for another 90 days. Okay. Then it's more expensive than your normal $50 per month, but you can extend it for another 90 days to give you a total of 270 days. 270 days. So. I did a lot of trips, and the last time I now, yeah, I did a 270 day stint. And then you have to do a visa run. Yes. Okay. And the thing starts all over again after that. It starts all over again if if you want to come back. Yeah, yeah. But if you're only wanting to stay here for six months, then I recommend you include the months of November, December, January, February, and March. Those are the best months to be here. Yes. In the south part. In the south part, because the sea's calmer. The weather's good, yeah, and uh, the fruit and everything is in season. Then, uh, okay. Well, I don't have health care, okay, but I have had a bit of experience by talking to people and whatever. Because I've been here two years, I could have a major operation here, and it would still work out cheaper than me having had health insurance. The cost of health care here is absolutely very, very, very low. Nice. That's right. a big bonus. And yeah. there's hospitals everywhere, right? Major hospitals uh, where they do. A man the other day was telling me he had stents put in his heart. They put it in through his wrist. So they do major surgery here, right? Um, apparently the uh, dental work here is very cheap. Um, but I know that Thailand's good for dental work and I've lost a feeling, but I'll wait till I get to Thailand to do my dental work. Right, right. But pharmacies here you can buy you don't need to go to a doctor you go to the pharmacy you tell him what's wrong with you or you show him the medicine you've got and it is so cheap my brother had to get some medicine he is on the pharmaceutical benefit scheme in australia he bought it for the same price here retail over the counter as he did by buying it in australia with his special discounts for being a pensioner wow wow so um, what about safety? Do you feel safe in Sri Lanka? Yes. And women feel safe here too. Women feel safe. Yes. Yes. There's, there's not an issue with women being uh, uh, approached here. In some countries, they follow the women around. Uh, I must admit, though, I do have one gripe, and that is the very, very small swimwear that some women wear on the beach. This is a Buddhist country. Right, and I just feel that sometimes the clothing that they wear on the beach and walking up and down the streets, they need to cover up a little bit. So, oh, so the when the Western women come and they're in, uh, they're lightly clothed, dental that's... dental floss clothing. <laughs> they're wearing their dental floss. <laughs> um, you think it's uh, a bit much for the locals? Is that? The I idea? just think it shows a, a lack of respect for their culture. Okay, we had lunch with Kim uh, before we before this interview, and he mentioned something. I get women once in a while, they'll email me and they ask me, you know, um, you're always talking about Thailand and the Philippines and where, you know, where does a woman go she wants to date? And Kim had an answer to that. What are some of the places that the foreign women come uh, to date uh, locals? Yes, well, uh, here um, it's, it's mainly the dating scene is European foreign women come here and, and date uh, Sri Lankan men. It doesn't happen. The men here don't like date the local women. Okay. Right. So I. It, it, it's you mean the very the, very the common. foreign men are not dating the local women, no. but the but the local men are dating the foreign women. Yes, I see. And yeah. that's here in Sri Lanka. Yes. Yeah. So it's a completely different scene to Thailand. The, the guys are they got great personality. They're surfing. They're very helpful. You know, and and the girls seem happy. And let's face it, you go on holidays to enjoy yourself. Yeah, of course. 
So each yes. to his own. And then, and then you also mentioned some other places that are like that. Uh, yes, uh, if you go to Kenya, you'll right. find a similar situation there where the European women go over there right. and date the local men. Okay. Something interesting that does happen here is there's a profession here called beach boys. Beach boys. So what the boys do is they patrol the beaches looking for foreign girls. Okay. Right. I met uh, a young fellow. He would have been 25, 30. He had a little puppy dog. And, of course, puppy dog runs up and down the beach. And the women say, oh, look at the lovely dog. And that's how he picks up his girls. <laughs> now, he gets money off at least three other women who have come and dated him. And when they go away, he asks them for money. Okay. And they send him money. Right. He got a Canadian girl pregnant. Right. So they invited him over to Canada. Right. Uh, lived in a house that they provided, got him a job, but he didn't want to do that. He was having more fun in Sri Lanka. Right. So he came back to Sri Lanka okay. and left his girlfriend there with the baby. Right. He, he prefers this lifestyle where he can get a new girl every summer. He was homesick. He was homesick. <laughs> no, I think he was just, he didn't want to work. <laughs> Look, I've enjoyed living here. The people here are lovely. Yeah. They're very helpful. Right. Uh, if you respect their culture. Yeah. One thing that people don't mention is the amount of religious ceremonies that go on here. Right. Now, I'm a Donda with that, that has a very big temple. Yeah. And we went to a thing called the Perahara. And that was seven days. They had about a one kilometer up and down the streets. The first time there were about 12 groups of dancers with one elephant. Right. And every day they got more dancers and more elephants. Wow. On the final day, there were about 40 to 50 groups of dancers with about 12 elephants wow. that went up and down. It was absolutely the best thing I have ever seen regarding a festival. Wow. And you don't hear about it. No one says anything about what, it. What month is it? Or That was in late July. Late July. And it's called the Perahara. Perahara. The Perahara. Uh, but Great tip. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. All right. All right. <laughs>